Imagine Martin Luther King never had a dream. Imagine instead he had risen to the steps of the Lincoln Monument and announced a five-point plan that he thought he could both sell to the black community and win a majority for in both houses of Congress that would bring civil rights legislation just that one step closer. Imagine that rather than thinking outside the narrow confines of his time and place, he had resolved to work only within them. Imagine, in short, that he had only been a realist and not an idealist. Where politics is concerned, realism has no time for dreamers. Realism comes with the adjectives hard-headed, unpalatable and harsh. Now don't get me wrong, realism is vital. When it comes to politics, you have to make things happen and you can only do that if you engage in a real world. In the words of Brazilian progressive Paulo Freire, what can we do today so that tomorrow we can do what we couldn't do today? But nonetheless, beyond today and tomorrow is the world that you would like to see one day, sometime. The vista beyond the horizon, the big idea, the utopia, basically the reason why so many political animals get up in the morning and phone bank, leaflet and knock on doors. So this is not an argument against realism, but it is an argument for utopian thinking. Because without idealism, there is no vision or ambition. If politics is the art of the possible, then radicalism must entail the desire to imagine other possibilities. Because many things that never seem plausible are now a reality. Women's suffrage was once a dream. Gay marriage was once a dream. Public education for all is still a dream. Many things that actually exist in some places are understood to be impossible elsewhere. In America, universal health care is just a dream. In parts of the developing world, three square meals a day is a dream. Even in the UK, three square meals a day is a dream for some. And many things that were once possible now seem like dreams. I went to university on a full grant, paid no tuition fees and graduated without debt. To today's young people, that seems like a dream. But just 30 years ago, it was a reality. Many things we think are impossible aren't. We simply lack the political will to make them happen. If this is utopian, said a German playwright Bertolt Brecht, tell me why it's utopian. There is nothing naive about believing that what's not possible in the foreseeable future is nonetheless necessary and worth fighting for now. For if nobody dreamed of a better world, what would there be to wake up to?